Oh, sorry. Um, you don't know. You do not know true self-loathing and shame that when your mother watches you being handcuffed and arrested and put into a cop car. My poor mother. All the things that she has had to deal with. Anyway, the cops here are pricks anyway. They really are. Honestly, New Mexico is horrible for law enforcement. I mean, I... I would not be surprised if somebody told me that the Albuquerque Police Department had um, like some kind of quota for shooting people because they are shooting people all the time. And uh, one time, not long before, one time at band camp, <laughs> uh, not long before I had my breakdown, I had gone off to go uh, do some grocery shopping and there was this guy and he was driving like a complete maniac. And, like, he could have hurt somebody. I mean, he was really being reckless. And he had pulled up next to me. We were at a light. And I flipped him off, you know? I mean, that's a public service, right? Informing someone that they're an asshole. I mean, somebody has to tell them, right? <laughs> anyway, um, well, he reached down in his seat and he pulled a gun up. And, you know... I was raised on Detroit's east side, you know, I'm I'm not uh, naive, you know, I, I've seen a lot of violent stuff, but it's still, that's a pretty upsetting thing, you know, um, and I knew exactly what kind of gun it was too because I had worked at a gold shop once and my boss had one, it was a Desert Eagle, and he had a box of bullets with the name Desert Eagle right on his dashboard, so, um, I, it freaked me out, and so I quick, I, I maneuvered in front of him and blew the red light to turn to get away from him. And uh, right away, I was already reaching to get a pen to try to write down his uh, driver's, his license plate number. And he did drive past me. I couldn't believe it, so I got to, you know, I, I was pretty sure I had the plate number memorized but I got to double check so I definitely had it and I was going to drive straight to the police department to report it but I was so shaken I couldn't find the police department <laughs> I'd never been there and so I just drove back home and I was all shaken and I called the police and the guy came out to take the report and he uh, and he gave me this long lecture and he's like well you know, that's what you get for flipping somebody off. He said, you shouldn't be doing that. And I'm like, Sh I'm sorry, but shouldn't you be, you know, scolding the person that pointed a gun at me? And he says, it's not against the law to point a gun at someone. It's not against the law to point a gun at someone. There's no law against that. But I bang on a window with a fruit knife in my hand, and I spend three days in jail, and I have a record. So... You tell me that the law in New Mexico isn't completely fucked. That guy lived, turns out he lived two blocks away from me. Every time I drove to work, I'd be like looking everywhere for that stupid car. So, anyway, I'm pretty bitter about that whole thing. And, you know, I've never really done a whole lot with my life, you know. There's not a lot I can say, look, this I made this, I accomplished this, I, I did this thing, you know. I've never been married, and I've never been a bridesmaid. <laughs> I've never even been asked to be a bridesmaid. I have five sisters. Somebody should have asked me. Anyway. So, um... I've never really had anything to be proud of, but uh, a couple people in my family have had problems with the law, and that was one thing that I've thought on more than one occasion, I thought, well, you know what, at least I can say that I've never had any trouble with the law. 
Now I can't even say that. I used to say that I um <laughs> I've shrank mostly due to some back injuries, I guess. I don't know, and I guess as you get older, you shrink. I don't know, but I used to be um I used to be what was it? They said the average height for women is six six, and I was I was six six and a quarter, and so I used to say, well, at least there's one thing where I'm above average. I'm a quarter inch above average, and one thing, because the most things I was. <laughs> below average or just average but now I'm not even above average in height I'm like like five five and three quarters <laughs> something like that so I know right real pity party that I'm having here <laughs> there's people in the dark in China and starving in India and I'm crying about being a half inch shorter. Such an idiot. I mean, obviously I'm not really upset about being a half inch shorter. It's the metaphor, obviously, but... Isn't it silly, the things that... There's all these really huge things, you know, stressors in life and, you know, big things like, you know, funerals and births and uh, landmarks and, isn't it funny though, the little things, the little things that break the camel's back, the last straw is always some insignificant thing. I just, I need to work on my coping skills. I read all these stories about, you know, well-known people with bipolar. And they're so terribly driven and successful and they have all these achievements. And they say that, oh, that's real common, you know, because hypomania is such a productive stage of the disease but I'm just bipolar I'm not driven I'm not successful we're going to college I haven't ever cheated anything I'm just doo doo there's nothing special about I want to contribute. I want to do something special. I'm such a baby. I'm sorry. I'll take a few minutes. I'll try to cheer up. <laughs>